Super Rugby Round 3 is in the books and today we are going to look into a review of what we saw from that round. Kicking off we had Moana Pacifica versus the Rebels in Hamilton of all places uh, due to some issues I believe with North Harbour Stadium moving the game there. Moana Pacifica uh, looking a lot stronger this year, showed that last week with a win over the Jura, but are still battling with their own issues and what, what I mean by that is I think that they are their own worst enemies when it comes to games like this. Uh, they, I would argue, look like the better team in the game but handling errors, uh, discipline, all of those things, patience as I always talk about with Moana Pacifica, came into play and again costly. Two yellow cards probably cost them in the long run looking at the game, the game. 29-23 uh, to, uh, to the Rebels over Moana Pacifica what was really interesting in this game, and, and I've been very highly critical of the Rebels, and I still highly critically am highly critical of the Rebels. You know, they've been in this competition for a number of years, yet this is Moana Pacifica's third year, and the Rebels didn't look that great compared to them. Even with a whole lot of new signings, uh, high-profile names, still didn't really get it right. What looked really good for the Rebels, which hasn't looked good up until this point, is their set pieces. Scrums were so dominant, absolutely dominant, like... The last scrum of the game, I believe, they marched Moana Pacifica back like six, seven metres, which just in a professional age has, doesn't happen too often. Their line out seemed to be, to be getting better, getting there for the Rebels. They were competitive there, but that's, the past two weeks they just looked so poor, and this week they, they stood up. Saying that, only 29-23, the Rebels, I think, were a set piece, stronghold, didn't put the game away, you know, had 10 minutes, or 20 minutes of the game with a man up, still wasn't convincing for me to say that these Rebels are back on track. They're now 2-1, and one, but, you know, those two wins have come up against the Force and now Moana Pacifica. But in the end, you know, these are those games that if they want to be considered a good side and make finals, they have to win those games, and the Rebels did it. For Moana Pacifica, it's the same argument you can make there. If they want to be a side that makes the finals, a home game against the Rebels needs to be won. We'll move on to the second game, which was the Tars versus the Highlanders, the Waratahs. After a famous victory against the Crusaders, now hosted the further south Highlanders in the first game in Sydney for the year. Look, honestly, on paper, these two teams are so evenly matched. Uh, the the I think the Waratahs went in as favourites purely on the back of the result against the Crusaders, and the game showed exactly what we expected and what we saw, which was two very even teams. The Waratahs have shown both weeks, both of the previous weeks, that slow starts are going to cost them. Now they managed to fight back against the Crusaders, and this one just fell short. You know, a Taney McKick goes over, and it, it still isn't the end of the world. But being down 10-0 is, is never a way you want to start the game, and they've done it two weeks in a row. So that's a big thing, I think, for the Waratahs that they'll be looking to work on. But again, they are right there, if not over the line. And the first week, I was so unsure because I just, you know, they got well beaten by the Reds, and I just went... Is this Tars team able going to be able to compete? Yes, they are. And I think this Waratahs team is going to keep improving as the year goes on. And they showed, again, another level of fight. And you could tell that the players wanted it um, just as much as that Crusaders game. So, unfortunate there. With the decision at the end to kick the goal, I believe it's the right decision. Even if Edmund misses, I think you have an opportunity to win the game. You take that opportunity. And as you know, a good coach has always said to me, is a goal kicker, can win you games, but it'll never lose you games. Like, the Waratahs had chance, chances to win that game, and it's not on Ed Mids for missing that kick's fault, but if he makes that kick and is a good kicker, they win that game. So uh, I guess a step in his growth will be to make those kicks, and if he wants to be the uh, Wallabies' first five, and again, he's, he's mentioned that he's probably not the most athletically gifted fly half in Australia, but he needs to make those kicks if he wants to be selected in that role. The Brumbies versus the Force, 22-19. Talking about the Wallabies' first five or fly half position, Ben Donaldson put his hand up big time in this game. Had two key line breaks, probably a third line break of a, a big prop uses his brain and decides not to tackle an opposition in front of him. Um, but yeah, look, he looked really good, Donaldson, and I think is coming to his own in the Force. And, and I, to be fair, the Force, I think, will be a little bit disappointed that they dropped this game and let this one go, because they were up, you know, 14-0 early, let the Brumbies back into it. I do want to touch base just quickly on the yellow card of Harry Potter. Um, I'm, And again, it might be a little bit controversial, but if in a game situation you're choosing to lift a player above the team, so in this instance, it's a kickoff, and, and I'll put the video next to me as I talk, it's a kickoff, 
Potter goes up to tap it back. Potter's only got eyes to the ball, and the argument will be, oh, you've got to leave space for him to be brought down safely. No other time on the field does a player get lifted like that except in a line-out, and in a line-out you've got the competitive jump and going for it. Like, there, there's a, there's a, the, the reason there is that they can be brought down safely is because there's two sides to the line-out. But in open play, you've chosen, chosen to lift the player above to me, that's your job to bring them down, and I'm interested, and I'd love to hear people's thoughts in the comment section, or or let me know if, if you think I'm I'm overstepping here. But I just think that that's a Brumby's job to bring them down. Even if there's a contest, there's a contest. Like to say that you can take the opportunity to contest the ball away, uh, I don't know. It's 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 an interesting one. I can understand a penalty, but then the yellow card that comes from it, the Brumbies go down and score while they're a man down. Um, the force it changes the game big, really really big for the game, and if the players who had lifted him had brought the, the the lockdown, I think it was Darcy Swain, safely, we don't have that same issue, so I'm just interested, I would love to know people's thoughts as well, that's just, just from going around, I was like, where else in the game do we go, oh yeah, you can lift someone, and if someone else is making a challenge for the ball when they come down, it's, you know, it's the person who's contested fault. Again with the Brumbies, you know, you're at home against the force team who have been well and truly beaten by the Hurricanes, leading 48 points against the Rebels, um, who you convincingly bet. I just, I'm not convinced yet with the Brumbies. They sit again 2-1, and one, but the one time they were challenged, which is against the, the uh, Chiefs, they got well beaten. I look at the Reds as now the, the, the leaders of the Australian, I know there's not conferences, but the Australian teams. Um, and I just go to the Brumbies, I go, you're yet to convince me that you're as good as you were last year or have improved on what you did last year. They lost a few players. I think Ryan Lonigan's slotting into Nick White's role really well, played another very good game. Look, they've got talent, there's no doubt. Noel Olesia was looking a lot better than he did last year. But I just, I make the case that, are, are they better than they were last year? Can they go further than they did last year? I don't think they can. At the moment, from what I've seen, it's a no. The big game of the round was the game in Fiji with the Judah versus the Crusaders. Both teams 0-2. Crusaders haven't been 0-3 since 1996, but now they are. And it's great news for every other Super Rugby fan, except for the Crusaders fans. Which, you know, you've had enough years of dominance to not... To, for, for myself and all the other non-Crusaders fans, we can now enjoy this rather than seeing you win all the time. So, again, Fiji have shown that it's so hard to go and win. In Fiji, the fans were incredible. That's what rugby's about. You know, that was a 16th, 24th man, whatever you want to call it, is having that noise, having that vibe. Vi I guess that's celebration of rugby in behind you, in behind your team. And they played really good. 20 to 10, um, played it well. Again, they went down early, but fought back. Teams going to Fiji are going to have a tough time, no matter no matter who you are. Um, I just think that's going to be a really hard place to go there and win. 38 missed tackles for the Crusaders sums up that game. And I know you're playing the Jura, who are an expensive team and hard to tackle. Big Fijians run hard. Um, and they've got wingers that you know are, are ridiculously talented. But still, that's not Crusader-like to miss 38 tackles. So, again, we sit here now, the Crusaders are free. We go, you lost Razor. What's happening here? Is Are they in trouble? Well, the, every week this goes on, they're in more and more trouble. So, look, it's an interesting time to be a Crusaders fan. For the Jura, they needed to win this. They're back on track one and two. Again, it's going to be those talk, the talks about, can they do this away from home? Can they win enough games away from home to show that they deserve to be a top four team? At the moment, they haven't shown it. But there's an opportunity here now that they're building these games um, that they can. And the more games we can get in Fiji, the better, if you ask. Two undefeated teams then went at it with the Hurricanes versus the Blues in Wellington. The Hurricanes were just on fire again to start off this game. And I think rightfully so won this game. Um, were the better team. But the Blues, I think, can still take away, even though they don't get any points from it, 29-21 in the end. They can still take a lot from this game. The Hurricanes, I just want to stick out a few names. Kenny Nanaholo, uh, is it is he a bolter already for the All Blacks? Um, again, he's just the, the way he breaks tackles is very Mark Talia like. Um, so an opportunity may open up there. Um, Cam Roygaard is backing up his form from last year, again this year, and and, and, and what is a, a heated position battle for the Hurricanes? You've got Roygaard, you've got Perinara, and you've got Joel uh, Jordy Volagen, um, all battling it out for that position. Ruben Love is just. Again, he may not. I don't think he's even a bolter now. I think he's putting his hand up so well. His hands and his transition and passing, his game, his sidestep, his speed, everything like that. He's a, he's a, he's playing at a level above that he did last year, and he's growing and growing. I think he's a, a real shot in for the All Blacks this year. For the Blues, they still showed their ruthlessness throughout 
uh, when they got into the opposition is 22. Very good at that. Again, probably just didn't create enough opportunities. Their All Blacks probably didn't put their hands up enough in this game. Uh, Ricky Oana kept pretty quiet. Mark Talia, other than Intercept, kept relatively quiet for what we think of Mark Talia at the moment. Um, so, yeah, look, they're, they're still a very good team. Again, for the Blues, if you look at their, their wins, you know, they had the Jura in the first game, won convincingly enough. Then they uh, played the Highlanders in, in Super Round, won convincingly enough. But I think all of their performances are a 6 or a 7 out of 10. They've not put that 10 out of 10 there. Whereas like this game for the Hurricanes, I think, was an 8 or a 9 out of 10. And they only lost by 8 points and just missed a penalty at the end of the game to get a bonus point in the Blues. So the Blues will take a bit from that game, but again, still didn't win. Final game to wrap up this incredible round of Super Rugby, Reds versus the Chiefs, 25-19 to the Reds. Congratulations, Reds. They've done it two years in a row, beating the Chiefs. Who I believe the Chiefs were going to go just about undefeated this season. That's how good they were looking. Smashed the Brumbies, were well into the Crusaders before David McKenzie injury and the Crusaders made their comeback. I... I I think the Reds have come so far with Les Kiss already. Their mall is just looking incredible. Like, their four-pack is incredible. McWright and Wilson are playing fantastic rugby. You know, people were sitting there going to start talking about the Bledisloe and the opportunity for them to win that with how good the Reds are playing and even the, the rest of the Australian teams are stepping up. I don't think we should overreact like that, but hey, some people are. Um, a big credit to the Reds there at the end. You know, 23 phases, the Chiefs attack the Reds line. Reds held on. Didn't give away a penalty, um, didn't allow the Reds to win that game and steal it from them, which is huge, which is exactly what Les Kiz would like to see. When you look at the, the actual stats of this game, it's a very similar stat line. So it's not like the Reds or the Chiefs blew this game. They didn't play terribly. The Reds are just at that level, and we saw it last week against the Hurricanes, You know, even with the red card situation. The Reds are a very good team. Let's not get that wrong. So even though the Chiefs lost this one, I still think the Reds are actually better than a lot of people thought they would be um, at this point in the season. So Chiefs will be disappointed. I think the um, trial with Josh Ioane at fullback probably didn't go the way they were expecting, um, would have expected a bit more out of that. But in the end, I think they'll be like, OK, we lost. We will, again, again, similar to what the Blues, they'll take more from that game than what they will get out of if it would just been a win. But yeah, for this round, round three, I just the big question was, are we seeing the most competitive Super Rugby season in a while, you know, the, the closest margin was 10 points, you know, the, the biggest margin that was um, 10 points for a win, and that was the Jura against the Crusaders in Fiji. Other than that, within 10 points, a lot of close games, Australian teams, you know, two weeks back back have beaten New Zealand teams, they look competitive, the Waratahs, you know, one kick away from beating, you know, making a 2-0 a, a two, two uh, round for the Australian teams. Moana Pacifica are looking a lot improved, so I just think we're going to see a lot more competitive games this year than we have in the past. Yes, we'll have the odd blowout, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting, so I'd love to know your thoughts. Are we seeing the most competitive year? Is there a team that could surprise us? Are the Reds, you know, the new team to beat with, with the, beating, them beating the Chiefs and being competitive against the Hurricanes? Are the Hurricanes now the team to beat only undefeated teams? Um, with some big wins on their, on their resume. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot going on in this season. A really good round of Super Rugby. But for now, I've been Luke from the Sports Booth. If you like these videos, please make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, but for now, I will see you later, and goodbye.